Today's sponsor is Audible.com, a leading provider of spoken audio information and entertainment. Listen to audiobooks whenever and wherever you want. And PNP Games, your online source for everything video games. Visit their website at pnpgames.com or at their two, soon to be three, retail locations in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alrighty, hello everybody and welcome to the Nintendo Pulse Podcast. This is episode number 60, recording this on Thursday, the 12th of September. Let me turn the music down. 2013, we haven't talked in a while, Stephen. How the hell are you? I, I, can, I can say, I can confirm that I am not much different than I was two nights ago. Nice. Nice. What was two nights ago again? I don't, I don't that was the last time we recorded an episode. Oh, has yeah. that one gone up yet? Yeah, it has. Oh, okay. It's been posted. Yeah, it's, right. you know, this week's been kind of a blur after my system kind of melting down last week. I've recorded stuff every single day. <laughs> wow. So I've been in this chair a lot um, and posting a lot of stuff. Um, actually, I was so behind um, that I got up at like 5.30 one morning so I could do an hour and a bit of editing and posting before I normally get up for work and then eat breakfast and, and leave. So I've been uh, I've been doing a lot of stuff. I am freaking exhausted, but uh, that is a good thing. That means that there's lots of content for you guys out there uh, in the listener land. I don't know. I wouldn't know I was trying to go there. That that was terrible. I'm sorry. I'm tired. That's my excuse, Stephen. Okay. I use that <laughs> excuse a lot, too. Uh, all right, man. Uh, how the hell are you? It's I mean, it's been two days yeah. and, you, and you've already said that you're doing as well as you were two days ago. I know you said yeah. that, but yeah. really, how are you? Well, uh, really, that is how I am. <clears throat> no, I'm I'm all right. I um, haven't uh, done a lot of gaming in the last 48 hours. Oh, but, um, disappointed. Yeah. So that's pretty much been it. Just been getting some stuff down, you know, stuff done around the house and... Uh, Getting up uh, too late in the morning and chasing a school bus and, you know, the usual parent stuff. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I all, both, both my kids are in school and mm-hmm. Allie's having her birthday soon and a bunch of her friends at school are having birthdays. So now we're doing a whole bunch of shopping for birthday party gift thingies and she's going to a sleepover and we're all freaking out. It's like, crap. She's not going to do well there, so we're going to have to go get her at 3 in the morning. And it's just, oh, yeah, it's it's fun. On top of everything oh, yeah. else, um, there's been some of that stuff as well. But um, cool. that's that's how it is when you have kids, unfortunately. It is. It is. Um, so how have you been? I, I've been? I've been really good. I'm tired. So tired. So, yeah. so tired. Um, but, uh, but I've been good. Um, actually came to a realization uh, today, and that is I do not believe that I will be buying a 2DS at all okay um you're not you're, you're not going to buy it no i'm not i'm not going to buy a 2ds on, Why is that? on release day well i'm glad you asked steven mm-hmm. that's what i was hoping you'd say right away mm-hmm. um and i wouldn't have to jump on it myself um <laughs> well i just saw a bunch of ads that were posted for this week and it looks like walmart uh canada is having a sale on the 3ds excel for 149 dollars Huh. So I'm going to jump out. Uh, I'm probably going to actually get there tonight. I'm going to go because the, the sale starts tomorrow. So okay. actually the sale starts in three hours mm-hmm. technically because if Walmart has a sale posted for Friday, do they actually start selling the stuff at like one second after midnight on yeah, Friday? I don't know. I don't know. I don't do Walmart. Oh, damn. Well, I'm going to go. I'm going to try. I'm going to fly down there at about midnight. So mm-hmm. I'm going to get even less sleep this week because I want to go and get her a pink one and they have stock. I checked online and I don't want all the pink ones to sell out. So I'm going to fly down there after doing two podcasts. We're going to do Nintendo Pulse and Tog. I'm going to fly down there, try to yeah. buy me a 3DS XL, and then I will be uh, coming home and sleeping. The sleep and they, of the dead. they have the pink XL in stock because they haven't yep. been making that for months now. Yeah, it's the pink and white one. Um, yeah, that's the one I got for my daughter. Yeah, it's uh, I looked online today and pretty much every Walmart in Winnipeg has uh, those ones in stock. So I'm going to fly hmm. down and try to get me one of those and uh, 
it'll be a, a good birthday party for my for my daughter. So she'll finally have a pink 3DS to or pink DS of some sort to play her games on. Oh, good luck with that. Yeah, but because of that, I I don't need a 2DS anymore. Um, except maybe I'll get bitten at the last second and go buy one for Nick and upgrade his DS Lite, my old DS Lite that he's still using. Maybe we'll do something like that. But yeah, that's uh, that's been my realization. So sorry, everybody that was hoping I would review it on release day. I don't know if I'm going to do that anymore because I don't want to just buy one just for the heck of it. <laughs> but uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Damn Walmart having sales, driving out the, the little man. Yeah, well, you know, <clears throat> that's what Walmart's business has been about all along. True. Very true. Very true. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Um, it's uh, It's been a crazy week. So what do you say we get into what we've been playing? Let's do that. All right, Stephen, uh, you're up first. Um, well, I mean, like I said, I haven't really done any gaming in the last 48 hours. I didn't play Animal Crossing yesterday or today. What? Um, I but find that unlikely. Yeah, well, I didn't. <laughs> uh, All right, you convinced was, uh, me. Too you busy. convinced me. All right. Well, I was, I was too busy. I had uh, plans right after work yesterday, part of my Doctor Who marathon, um, watched two more Doctor Who, classic Doctor Who stories. Nice. I was going to sing uh, the song again, but I decided not to. Yeah, yeah, I would, but um, all I've got is X-Files theme in my head now. Nice. For some reason, I can't think of the Doctor Who. So it always happens. I was telling you this in, you know, before the show, that you know, whenever I try and think about the Doctor Who theme song, I always get either the X-Files theme, or Immigrant Song by Led Zeppelin, because they both kind of sound like the uh, intro Doctor Who. I also noticed that the Metroid Prime theme, well, which is the Metroid theme, just the general Metroid theme, uh, has very similar tones to it as well. So, um, But yeah, uh, I have um, the beautiful town ordinance in effect, so I don't have to worry about my flowers dying or the place getting overrun with weeds. So, right. Uh, I need to catch up on some sleep, so... That's more important right now than uh, playing more Animal Crossing. Sorry, this took way too long to start um, playing. You said the immigrant song by Led Zeppelin, so I immediately queue it up and go to play it, and it's sitting in my um, iTunes Match folder. <laughs> it took like <laughs> 30 seconds to spin up and finally start playing, which is wow. literally the slowest that has ever worked for me. So. Wah, yeah. wah. So much for comedic timing there, Stephen. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry. Cool. So not much of of nothing, which is which is good too. That is a good yeah. good thing too. Uh, for me, I've been playing some Disney Infinity with the kids, having a lot of fun with that. Um, I've been playing Call of Duty. Yabba de yabba de. I can't remember the actual tagline. <laughs> um, the one on the iPad. Call of Duty. Yes, Call of Duty again. I think it's called. Yes, Call of Duty. Um, we approve it. We Call approve of Duty. Let's see. Call, call of Duty. The Call, yes, call, and call of Duty again. <laughs> yeah, I've been playing Cod some of that. Icoda. Yeah. Cod Yeah. Cod Yakoda. Cod Yakoda. There you go. Cod, yes, Cod Nukoda would be fitting, but no. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, so I've been playing some of that. Call of Dino. <laughs> call of Dino. <laughs> yabba dabba do. That's, that's, that's a good one. Uh, thanks, Justin Cargooth. That's uh, that could actually be the game I was playing. I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, I've been playing a little bit of that on my iPad, and it's this really cool. Um, and I'm not being facetious. It's a really cool Call of Duty mobile game, um, and where it differs from most first-person shooters on the iPad is that it has both a first-person mode and a like kind of a top-down overview of. Um, kind of like if you're in like an XCOM or a turn-based or real-time strategy game. Um, so you can basically go into first-person mode, snipe some people, um, see some people behind a wall, switch into the um, the bird's-eye view and kind of move each of your guys because you have a two-man squad, uh, or at least you begin with a two-man squad um, around the level to like flank or whatever and then either take them out that way or go back into first-person mode and stuff. Really cool cool way to do a shooter on the ipad i'm i'm really really enjoying it um a lot more than i thought i would um when i heard that call of duty was coming out or came out actually it was like a surprise release on the ipad i was just like oh yeah another shooter that's going to be horrible um and not as good as it should be and then i watched a uh, let's play of the first mission it's like oh this is way different than anything else that has ever been on the platform so downloaded it immediately just so i could experience it and talk about mm. it and it's actually really damn good. Um, I'm really quite impressed. So good, good, good on you, Activision, for doing something 
that required some thought, um, not just putting out the same old game over and over and over again, which um, a lot of companies are are easy to do. That's the easy uh, easy way to, to make some sales. Um, but they yeah. haven't been doing that, which is uh, really kind of cool. And besides that one, um, I got a copy of uh, Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 Remix from PNP Games and popped it in and realized that the original Kingdom Hearts game is a really old game and its <laughs> its mechanics are really busted in this day and age. I had they a feeling are. they would be, but oh my God, are they busted. Um, so I got past all the tutorial missions. I built my rafts, so ran around the island with so- Sora and got all the items for building the raft and gave them to the girl that asked for them, whose name I can't even remember. And then basically just said, you know what? I, yeah, I think that's enough. Um, I think that's good for right now. I'm going to take a break, maybe come back to it in a little bit. So I turned the game off and, and that was that. So I wasn't, didn't get as nostalgic for this as I thought I would. I usually, I get like the nostalgia comes, comes hard and heavy um, when I play a game that I used to love um, from way back in the day. Uh, but for some reason, this one, the, uh, I don't know, the gameplay mechanics are just so old um, and it just feels so disjointed. So um, I'll get back to it eventually. But uh, as of right now, it's just like, mm, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, maybe that's why I didn't like Kingdom Hearts. Maybe the first time I played it, it was already a couple of years old, maybe two, three years old. Yeah. And it already felt clunky, bland, uninteresting and so slapped together to me. Um, yeah. I didn't like the controls on it. I didn't like the camera. And, um, and, and I didn't like the fact that they had slapped all these Final Fantasy characters together with Disney characters. I mean, when when Donald Duck came walking into that throne room, I'm watching him walk, and I'm like, why is Donald Duck in this game? Why are there Disney characters in this game? It's I, I, I like stupid. That. I like that part. I didn't like it. That's, I didn't like it at all. I, and I, I love Disney. I love and, Disney, too. You know, I, I, I played Quackshot. I have Quackshot on my Genesis. I was just playing that, you know, less than two weeks ago. Steven, why do you hate fun? I, I hate fun. I absolutely hate fun. I'm a Nintendo fan. We, yeah. We are never happy about anything. No. And when other people are happy about something, we just have to piss all over it. It's yeah. what we do. Yeah. You, you said yeah. Xbox? No, Nintendo fan. Oh, okay. oh, oh, well, yeah. it's all interchangeable. Yeah. No, I, I loved <laughs> I loved when it first came out. Um, I, I I even loved building my gummy ship and flying through space and all that fun oh, stuff. That's stupid. Um, yeah, it was. <laughs> I agree. But I still enjoyed it. Um, okay. I'm glad you did. But yeah, this one. That makes one of us. A lot of the just a lot of the uh, gameplay mechanics are just they're just old and um it's i guess it was a little bit sobering so that's why i kind of just had to take a break but i'll I'll eventually get back to it and uh, play through it um it's a pretty good um trilogy um that you get all in one disc so you get three separate games um for like 40 bucks so it's it's actually a pretty damn good value because all the games are pretty meaty so um but yeah kingdom hearts hd 1.5 remix on the playstation 3 is also something that i'm playing Neat. All right. Well, let's uh, take a small break before we get into the rest of the show, Stephen. Um, okay. Have I ever told you about a great service called Audible.com? <clears throat> no, and I don't really want to hear it. But can we talk about Audible? Yeah, let's let's talk about Audible.com. So um, I, I'm a huge fan of Audible. I'm a huge fan of audiobooks. Um, I I used to read a lot because um, I used to take the bus everywhere. Um, and these days, I don't take the bus ever, and I don't have time to actually sit there with a book. I'm either podcasting editing podcasts, spending time with the kids, or sleeping, the sleep of the death, uh, <laughs> of the dead, sorry, um, or death, whatever, um, because I'm so tired from my day. Um, but with Audible, uh, I've, I'm have i still experiencing the joy of reading without having to sit there with um, like dead trees in my lap, which is a really good thing. Um, Audible is an online service that basically has 150,000 books um, in audiobook form. You sign up for an account, you get X number of credits a month. You use those credits to get books and you listen to books. Um, and it is just as good as reading because every single word that is in the book is being ta- said to you by an amazing voice actor um, from some some 
some people that only do audiobooks to um, how about Will Wheaton is is a guy that uh, does a lot of readings these days. And I want to tell you guys about a book that you guys might be interested in um, for you to check out on audible.com. It's called Masters of Doom, how two guys created an empire and transformed pulp culture. And it's it's basically a, but a book about the two Johns, as uh, Will Wheaton says, um, John Carmack and John Romero and how they started id Software and basically changed an industry um, when Wolfenstein came out. Um, that's all everybody talked about. It's like, oh my God, you're in a real world and you're exploring it. And then Doom came out and everybody's mind that was already blown and like they haven't finished scraping it off the wall. Uh, whatever was in their head exploded again. And then Quake came out and it's just like, how does this company keep um, like iterating on an awesome idea, but totally changing uh, the, the game for everybody? Um, they, they were kind of the first that would do everything and then everybody would follow suit. Um, but, uh, but yeah, this is a really great book. Um, yeah, you've read it, right, Stephen? No, no, no you, Stephen hasn't read it. So, um, but you can, if you're an audible fan. So, um, how, I want to give you guys a little sample of the great Will Wheaton reading this book, um, uh, because it's, uh, it's, it's comedic gold really is what it is. <laughs> Introduction. The two Johns. There were two games. One was played in life. The other was lived in play. Naturally, these worlds collided, and so did the two Johns. It happened one afternoon in April 2000 in the bowels of downtown Dallas. Bowels. The occasion was a $100,000 prize tournament of the computer game Quake 3 Arena. Hosted by the Cyber Athlete Professional League, an organization that hoped to become the NFL of the medium. All right, so you get the idea. Um, you can go, Wheaton! You can say that at the top of your lungs if that's what you want to do. Um, but yeah, it's every book that they have online on their service is read by a really awesome um, narrator. I call them voice actors because that's essentially what they're doing, especially for some books like the Wheel of Time series that I listen to. Um, there's um, a, a lot of people, a lot of the the um, the narrators rather will actually take um, different inflections based on the character um, that they're reading yeah. and stuff like that. Like if you've ever listened to any of the Harry Potter books, um, that's done really well there as well. Um, it's just a great service. Um, hundreds, 100,000 plus books uh, available for you to listen. And it, basically, if you want to listen to it, Audible has it, um, as I said, with over 100,000 titles of virtually every genre, you're going to be able to find what you're looking for. And um, today, by listening to the podcast, you can get a free audiobook and a free 30-day trial to the audible.com service uh, just by signing up at our special URL, uh, which is audiblepodcast.com slash Nintendo Pulse. That is audiblepodcast.com slash Nintendo Pulse. All one word, N-I-N-T-E-N-D-O-P-U-L-S-E. -E. I'll put a, post a link in the show notes, of course. Um, but yeah, they are... Um, they are great. They have uh, so many books um, that I've read. Um, I've been a huge fan of the service for uh, such a long time. And I want all you guys, the listeners of the Nintendo Pulse podcast, to check it out. Um, check out all the books. Uh, check out the service. And uh, if you're like me, you're going to sign up and you're going to be addicted and not want to cancel. Um, just because getting a, getting a book or two every month um, that uh, you can read in your spare time while you're mowing the lawn, uh, shoveling snow, <laughs> doing whatever, you just yeah. keep you keep your iPod on and uh, listen to the books, which is really great. Um, even better, the Audible um, uh, iOS and Android app uh, actually will save your place. So if you go between devices, if you go between an iPad or your iPhone or your computer, it's going to remember your place, um, so you never lose a page of the book as it's being read to you. So, um, really cool. great service. And uh, even better, um, whatever you get from the service from signing up is yours to keep for life. So um, five years, you, you open up, you download Audible on your I, iPhone 70 and uh, download the Audible podcast app, run, launch it, log into your account. And all the books that you had as part of the Audible service will be ready for you to re-listen to at a, at a later point. Uh, really oh, awesome cool. service. So this isn't a rental thing. No, it's not a rental. It's They're, huh. they're yours. Um, you can even download the files and drop them into your iTunes folder if that's what you want to do. It's um, really great service. Um, I've been a huge fan of Audible for years and years and years now, and I do thank them for supporting uh, the podcast this month. So check them out, audiblepodcast.com slash Nintendo Pulse. I think I may try this out. 
yeah, I, I, I urge you to, it is a, an amazing service. Um, and I mean, like at, they even have, um, magazines and newspapers that you can get as like a free bonus to your membership. So if you want to hear the, the latest, uh, news headlines read to you every morning, you just set your phone to download them every morning, listen to it while you're making coffee or breakfast or, or sandwiches for your, uh, for your kids in the morning. And, and, and do that. It's it's really great. And I urge you all to check it out at audiblepodcast.com slash Nintendo Pulse. You know, last year, uh, I was trying to finish up the Wheel of Time series, and I had gotten stuck on Winter's Heart, because towards the end there, those books get really long and really mm-hmm. dense. Yep. And um, I finally finished reading Winter's Heart, and I, I didn't have the stomach to open another one of the books. So I got the audiobook for... I think what's the next one it was Path of Daggers and Crossroads of Twilight. I think were the two after that. Yeah, so, I, I've ones. forgotten all the names because yeah. there's, they're, yeah, they're like Final Fantasy um, colon yeah. names. Um, <laughs> they, they just get a little crazy. Yeah, so I went through those two as audiobooks, and you're, you're exactly right. Where the narrator will <clears throat> will put on the voices and um, yeah. <laughs> the. The, the voices that he had for some of the female characters were always very entertaining to me. Yeah, it's it's so good. And yep. and if nothing else, the best best part about Audible is now you get to uh, you get to hear the correct pronunciation for all of these names that you're reading in these books. Yeah, I always <laughs> had to go to the glossary in uh, Wheel of Time. I'm like, great, another new made up word with now, how with do I pronounce this one? and no vowels at all. How do yes. I pronounce this? Uh, yeah, it's always always a lot of fun. Yep. All right, cool. Let's get into the rest of the show, man. Uh, how about some some listener feedback? Sounds good. All right. We've well, got a couple pieces today, don't we? Yeah, we got a couple emails. Um, you guys are awesome sending in your emails. Um, so the first one is from Eric. And uh, it goes, uh, during your next deal segment, maybe you could mention that you can get the Wind Waker bundle tax-free from Newegg.com. I had ordered mine from GameStop and paid $18 for tax and then saw it on Newegg for $2.99 with no tax. Uh, I enjoy your show and finding ways to save money. Good new segment. I had never been to the Gamefly site for buying games before listening to it on your show. And that's from Eric. So uh, a nice little tip from Eric. Um, There are ways to order things without paying tax. Um, Being good citizens in the U.S., you're supposed to claim it at the end of the year. All the Internet purchases online. Um, I'm not American, so do what you want. But I know. The letter of the law says one thing and what a lot of people yep. do is in a different way. Um, in Canada, it's way different. I, I mean, a lot of places actually charge us tax and then we reclaim it. And it's just it's a stupid, stupid thing. But uh, but yeah, that's a, a good way to save a couple dollars and, and postpone that payment to late, later in the year. if That's uh, how you want to play with. Cool. All right. So uh, Eric likes your segment, Stephen. <clears throat> yeah, that's great because uh, there's uh, something notable today. Cool. I haven't put it on the outline, but I will nice. mention it. Nice, nice, nice. All right. So our next uh, email came in from Tim. Uh, here's a question for the Nintendo Pulse podcast. How limited do you think the Wii U Wind Waker HD console bundle will be? My impression is that it will be limited in time frame and not numbers of units. That this holiday season, that bundle will be available in wide release. Uh, 3DS limited editions seem to sell out almost the same day that, that they are available for sale, though. Uh, anyways, I would love to hear your thoughts on that in an upcoming episode. And thanks for walking me through that setup, Tim. Um, that line is, uh, he sent me a message. Uh, he, he runs a podcast and wanted to know how he could bring multiple people into his podcast. So he sent me a message and I told him about all the many thousands of dollars I spent on hardware and software <laughs> and said, you don't have to do it this way. <laughs> if you don't want to stream live, uh, if you just want to record it, get some like call recorder and you can record your Skype uh, call. And he's like, wow. All right. Well, here's a question. And there you go. So his question, how do you think or how limited do you think it will be? Um, I don't know. How about I, how about I go first? Okay. Um, it's, it's an exclusive to GameStop in the States, correct? the uh wind waker hd no not the console bundle bundle. just the The, game the game the game special edition with the statue yeah and and it's gone and it's gone they're all sold out of the the with the statue thingy yeah you can no longer get one okay pre-orders on it are sold out okay cool so i i was hoping that one of the first things that was said that it was in in uh, eb games gamestop whatever uh um exclusive was in fact false and it is which is good so that means that you're probably going to see this thing replacing 
all, almost every other Wii um, that's being shipped from Nintendo right now. I don't think they're going to ship the normal deluxe package. They're going to ship these ones and get as many of these in stores um, because it doesn't really cost them any more to put this on the shelf. It has two download yep. codes inside of it, and it has little like fancy writing on the gamepad, and that's essentially it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. I, I think this is going to be made available everywhere. And then once um, this isn't the new hotness, um, the next Nintendo game that is the new hotness will then become the bundle and there'll be yep. another uh, bundle. I think this it, what this is going to show Nintendo is that it works. They're going to sell millions of these and they're going to keep wanting to sell millions of consoles so that um, who, their their shareholders don't demand people to start um retiring and stepping down um yeah. so I, I think that this is going to have to work for them and if it does they're going to keep doing this yeah and it's interesting to see <clears throat> things kind of coming full circle especially if this turns out to be a success because you know you remember when you bought your nes when you bought your super nes even i think when you bought your nintendo 64 it came with a game i don't think nintendo 64 did didn't it come with Mario 64? I don't think so. I think you had to buy it. Oh, that's right. Mario 64 wasn't out at launch, was it? Yeah. Oh, yes, it was out at launch. It was out at launch. Okay. I don't know. I'll have to double check. I can't remember. I, I was talking about it that with a friend. He's like, no, you had to buy it separate. That's why everybody doesn't have it. And I'm like, mm-hmm. but everybody I know that has a Nintendo 64 has Mario 64. So did everybody just buy the game? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think everyone bought it. Um, yeah, but, you know, back then they used to bundle the games with the system and then I guess they figured they could make the money selling it separately. But now when you have everything available digitally, there's not a significantly higher cost to bundling a game. If you do it digitally, you know, why not? Mm-hmm. And they've been doing it with their handhelds for a while. I mean, you, the, the DSi XL, when it came out, it had a bunch of eShop games. Uh, it wasn't called the eShop at the time. It was called uh, DSi Shop or whatever. Yeah. Yep. And um, the, the 3DS, they have 3DSs that you could buy, like the uh, Animal Crossing 3DS XL had a digital copy of Animal Crossing pre-installed on it. And they had a Mario Kart one, didn't they, for Mario Kart 7? Yeah. So, I yeah. mean, this is certainly something that's been successful for them in, in the past on other platforms. Um, I mean, it's, it's interesting now because, you know, I think that the only uh, I don't th- don't think we saw a lot of that last generation, did we? Mm. I mean, the Wii you could get the Wii with uh, Mario Kart. Yeah, and right. you had um, uh, well, of Wii course Sports Wii Sports. Launch, Wii yeah. Sports was packed into the Wii from day sure. one. Um, sure, and those were all physical games. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. No, yeah. no, none of the download type type things. Um, the, I just did a, the Wikipedia, and it looks like the the Nintendo sixty four was released with two launch games: Super Mario sixty four and Pilot Wing sixty four. Uh, uh, and Japan got a third game as well. So, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't even remember. Um, so long ago. Um, all I know yeah. is that everybody I know owns Super Mario sixty four. So it might as well have been a pack in um, for as well as it sold for Nintendo. Yeah. Obviously, this made Nintendo more money though. Sure, <laughs> it's a good idea. This is a good idea to pack a game in. It, oh, totally. Um, especially when, well, my only concern with this unit. Um, I, I don't know if we brought it up um, when we talked about it initially, but I'm thinking to the Walmart crowd, the people that buy their system, take it home and never hook it up to the Internet. Not that everybody at Walmart does that, but there's a uh, there's there's a lot of stories where people don't have the Internet. Um, they buy a console because it's on sale on Black Friday um, and they can't get patches and stuff like that. So for Nintendo to do this, they are basically giving someone um a game that they won't be able to use unless they have the internet um, to download it. So yeah. maybe this will blow up on them. I, I highly doubt it. I mean, yeah, I doubt it too. If you don't have the internet, um, like broadband internet, you probably have a way to tether your phone long enough to download a game or something. Wow. Can you imagine? That would be very, like, unless you're using LTE, that would be very slow and uh, all your bye bye data cap for a month. But yeah, uh, yeah there, there has to be ways for, for people to do that. So, um, yeah, and if you're spending three hundred dollars on a console, you're probably the type of person that probably has the internet at home already. It's not like it's a ninety nine dollar um, big big sale yeah. or whatever. Take your Wii U into the <laughs> Starbucks, <laughs> turn on your screen. That is a great idea. Controller. That is a great idea. Get on the Wi Fi. Yeah, because you, you can do that because you have the gamepad. Mm-hmm. That is awesome. That is a great idea, Stephen. Yeah. So you you heard it here first. Come like whenever this game comes out. Uh, you're going to have many people sitting in Starbucks, plugging in their their Nintendos and uh, downloading games over the free Wi-Fi. Yeah, um, you heard it here first. It's going to be uh, 
It's going to change change things. It's going to change the world, Stephen. <laughs> so Let's anyway, see that happen. <laughs> so anyway, back to Tim. Uh, thanks again for your question. And and yeah, I, I, just like you, I think this bundle is going to be plentiful. Um, I think you're going to see it everywhere. And as soon as, as I said, this game isn't the new hotness, whatever game is will be bundled in and that will become the next bundle. Um, I, I can't see them just going from this and then trying to sell the regular deluxe bundle for two ninety nine and having any success at yeah. all. So yeah, it's, uh, it's good. All right, Tim, thanks uh, for your email. Uh, Eric, thanks to you as well. Uh, if you want to let us know what you think of the show or ask us a question, VG podcast at gmail.com. And we can, uh, we can um, answer your questions just like we did for Tim and Eric. All right. Uh, next up, notable releases. Uh, this week saw the release of wonderful 101 on the Wii U. Um, it's getting it's getting interesting reviews. We'll put it that way. Um, yeah, <laughs> I had the chance to play it. Uh, and after playing the demo, I chose to get Kingdom Hearts instead. Um, maybe that wasn't such a good idea because I'm not really enjoying Kingdom Hearts either, but uh, mm-hmm. Wonderful 101, um, it's, I, I'm just looking on Metacritic right now, it's sitting at a 79 um, Metascore from from the critics, um, and that's with... Which is not bad. That's with about 60 reviews, so that's a fair number, or sorry, 57 critics, so 79 out of 100, so people are still digging it. Um, I'm hearing, I'm hearing t- tweets and blog posts from people both sides people hate it people love it people think that the system's too convoluted people think it's fun and uh challenging so um yeah let's uh let's uh let's see (laughs) read read some reviews and 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 see first before you buy it because your mileage may vary uh canon she in the chat room says what you guys just got 101 we've had it for three or four weeks and uh that is one of the rare games that came out first in australia canon shane uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. usually it's the other way around so yeah no it just came out this week and it's on store shelf so check it out i think it's a full re- full uh, price release too so it's 59.99 yeah. cool all right uh deals steven what do you have to tell us about well Game first deals? about wonderful 101 did you hear that uh it came out this week that wonderful 101 was originally a wii game no i didn't read that it was originally planned to be a Wii game, and then they decided to develop it for Wii U instead later. Wow. I, I remember um, reading an article about the game uh, where it was supposed to be a whole bunch of Nintendo uh, mascots. So instead of like random citizens in random um, superhero suits, it was all going to be Nintendo uh, mascots. Um, oh, and interesting. They, and they played around with that first, but then decided that uh, just um, one main character and a bunch of random superheroes was the best way to go. Hmm. I guess that kind of works. Yeah. Kind of makes sense. I think it would have been hard for them to pull off Nintendo mascots because they're so varied in size and capabilities. I mean, how do you have a swarm of Donkey Kong, Peach, you know? You probably wouldn't have had enough of them either. Just kind of piling up behind uh, someone, you know? Uh, all right, deals. The main thing this week is that Gamefly is having uh, a big sale. They Periodically, they have sales to clear out um, a lot of their games. So there's a bunch of Wii U games here that are pretty cheap. Um, I know New Super Mario Brothers U is usually uh, sixty, mm-hmm. uh, and it is down to fifty there. Now again, these are these are used, but these are GameFly used, which is basically like it's basically brand new but open. Um, <laughs> they have all their original codes and everything like that, and everything's in perfect condition. Um, the only thing that goes to the customers are the discs, and I've never had one come to me in anything less than perfect clean condition so um ninja gaiden 3 razor's edge is 20 dollars warriors orochi 3 hyper is 20 darksiders 2 is 20 you know it seems to be a lot of them are this you know if you want to go for a really bad game you can get 007 legends for 15 dollars uh, nintendo land is down to 18 that was 60 i mean yeah mm-hmm. if you didn't get it bundled then uh you're you're probably weren't able to find it at launch is the only reason I can think of that you wouldn't do that. <laughs> um, and in the 3DS uh, section, I'm going to just do a quick click on this because I'm not as prepared as I should be. The best sellers over there at Lego City is 18 Paper Mario is $18. That's the cheapest I've seen that by far. Paper Mario sticker star for $17.99. That is a great price. Yeah. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Gates to Infinity, $18. Lords of Shadow, Castlevania Lords of Shadow, uh, Klosmoff, 
that what we were calling it? <laughs> yeah. $20. <laughs> uh, let's see. Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transform for 3DS, 15 You know, I played the demo of that mm. um, a few days ago, and I forgot about it until now. They did a really exceptional job of translating that big HD game down to that small screen. It really? looks okay, and it moves pretty well, too. That's interesting. I've, um, I've played a lot of it on the Wii U, so maybe I'll have to check yeah. out the demo at least. Yeah, I was, I was really surprised that it was as competent as, and looks as good and moves as well as it does. Uh, let's see what else here. Uh, uh, Scribble Knots Unlimited hmm. is uh, 18. Sonic Generations is 18. And I think Sonic Generations is, isn't that on, didn't that just hit the eShop for 30 bucks? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. $18 at Gamefly. And you can get a physical copy of it for that. Um, Amazing Spider-Man, $13. Epic Mickey Power of Illusion, $15. Ooh. These are a lot of the games that were okay, but not really you know, necessarily worth the $30, $40 they were originally asking for them. So now's the time to, to pop on these. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of other ones here too. Pilot Wings Resort, $15. I mean, that's, come on. That's a good price. That was a good game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good game, good game. Yeah, good deals. Awesome. Thanks, Steven. Mm -hmm. All You're right. Welcome. Moving on. Um, Let's get into the news. So Nintendo just released a press release this week, letting us know about some game price drops. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if there's going to be the Nintendo Classics, if they're going to have changed arts. Like, you know how uh, Super Mario Galaxy 1, uh, you can get the, the, the Nintendo Classics uh, version that has uh, a border around the original arts. Is that called Nintendo Classics? I think it is. Yeah. They were. They used to call them uh, Player's Choice. Player's Choice. That's right. And yeah. then on the Wii, they started calling them Nintendo Classics. I think. So they've um, they've done that to a couple new games: uh, Super Mario Galaxy Two, New Super Mario Brothers Wii, and Wii Sports Resorts are all available at a at a bargain of a retail price of just twenty nine ninety nine each, which is ten dollars more than what Nintendo Classics usually are. So yeah, eh, I don't know. Seems kind of strange to me. I thought I'd mention it here anyway. If anybody was waiting to uh, pick up. Uh, a copy of uh, Super Mario Galaxy 2 and did want to pay $49.99 or $59.99 depending on what you're finding at foreign stores. $29.99 is a better deal, um, but I was hoping that it would be down to 20 bucks, just like uh, Galaxy 1 dropped to when it, when it hit the classics or selects or classics or selects or selects or classics or choice or whatever it's called. <laughs> so uh, there you go. Three games, uh, three decent games available for cheap um, now price drops from nintendo cool all right moving on um do you remember how um uh, a bunch of apple bloggers were saying nintendo's doomed and that the psp is the best-selling game console still um all, all these other like totally off the mark and baseless uh kind of comments mm -hmm. uh well they should be reading uh these npd press releases because uh the 3ds is the best selling game platform for the fourth straight months, uh, month, uh, not month, well, I guess four, it would be four months, but it was a fourth straight month and, uh, doing pretty good. Um, let's see, what is the actual sales numbers? Because this press release is just such a hot mess of numbers and everything. Um, w one interesting number is, um, they basically sold in 2013 6.47 million units of Nintendo 3DS software, um, which is a 30% increase over last year. So, <laughs> yeah, they're they're doing really really good. Yeah, that is um, crazy. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> Nintendo's doing okay. Um, yeah. they're they're still still doing okay, um, even though people. Um, are, are saying that they should just close up shop and make 99 cent or free apps on the iPad. Um, I, I still think Nintendo's going to be around for uh, quite some time. Oh, yeah. Um, some other highlights from Nintendo. Uh, Mario and Luigi Dream Team launched on August 11th and sold nearly 190,000 units, both physical and digital. Uh, Pikmin 3 um, launched on the 4th of August and sold 115,000 units. Uh, New Super Luigi U um basically came out on august 25th as a as a retail price or a retail package rather but was available digital only um sold about 120,000 combined units so not a lot of people playing new super luigi u not as many as i thought they would sell and um 
yeah, lots of really good sales. Like Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, 863,000 units combined. Animal Crossing New Leaf, 739,000 units. New Super Mario Brothers 2, 406,000 units um, in in 20, 2013 uh, to be 1.85 million units total. Wow, that's really awkward. Nintendo needs to work on their press releases. These are very, very <laughs> awkward. Um, and this one is a quite a surprise. Um, Fire Emblem Awakening has sold 390,000 units, uh, which is huge because they wanted to sell, was it 80,000? They wanted to sell at least 80,000 units to break even. Um, and this is like 300,000 more units. So um, this is doing really good for the Fire Emblem dev team. So yeah, great. Um, some really great sales. Uh, 3DS is kicking butt. Uh, when the 2DS comes out, um, it's going to drive um, so many more sales because Pokemon X and Y will be coming out at the same time. Nintendo is going to be printing money yet again. And uh, those lovely GIFs will start appearing on uh, game blogs all over the internet. It'll be a, it'll be a great, great thing. <laughs> sure. Let's see if they can do something with the Wii U. Yeah, exactly. Um, that would be really, really good. Um, some more MPD numbers came out, not from Nintendo. And this is the top 10 um, game sales. So uh, for August, of course, um, of course, Madden NFL 25 is the number one because a lot of people buy the Madden. They like the Madden and it's number one. Um, oh, yeah. oh blah, 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 blah. stop ads, bad ads. Um, Saints Row 4 uh, is number two. Uh, Disney Infinity is number three. OK, seriously, this ad keeps just auto playing. For no reason. Thank you. Um, Disney Infinity is number three, which is quite surprising. Um, even more surprising, there's parts of the world that are only getting the Wii U and 3DS version. The uh, 360 Wii and PlayStation 3 versions just aren't being um, published out there, which is kind of neat. Um, Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell, which has a Wii U version, is four. And way down at the bottom, uh, number 10 is Pikmin 3. So Pikmin 3 sold enough to be in the top 10 list, which is pretty good. Cool. Um, total software sales are up 21% to 305 million um, industry wide. And these are NPD numbers. So these are physical sales only. It doesn't include any of the digital stuff. So um, th mm, that number, number five is Minecraft for 360. Yeah, which is um, it has a disc version. And, oh, it does. And oh, that's why that. it's on the NP NPD numbers now. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> because I, I thought that it was digital only. My mistake. No, you can buy it on disc. And the disc version is selling like crazy which doesn't make sense to me but i guess there's a lot of people that don't connect to the internet and download stuff with uh, microsoft space bucks um, scares a lot of people away um yeah i guess that's about it for mpd that's all the um the the really interesting things um but uh yeah uh the the whole game industry is doing pretty darn good um a lot of people say it's dying and everybody should just avoid avoid playing games on consoles and and play on your phone and your tablet because that's the best experience and you'll get the best games obviously that's not true um as we as console gamers know um and it looks like the np numbers have balanced out a little bit which is uh which is a really good thing all right. Um, this week, there was an interesting news story that came out um, over on Polygon, which is always a great blog. Um, and it basically talks about how uh, the relay feature um, was invented or thought up or um, brainstormed from Nintendo. Um, it was actually um, in the latest uh, Iwata Asks. So Hideki Kono, um, who is in software development, was uh, basically came to New York um, and uh, was walking from his hotel to his meeting. And even though he walked through Times Square, he was getting nothing. Um, and this is someone that works in Japan who you basically you move around in your apartment and you get five street passes um, just because of the <laughs> density of people in Japan. Um, so they saw that and basically said, wow, okay, this, uh, this needs to be fixed. Let's figure out a way to, to sort this out. And basically that's, that's street pass relay. That's how it was born. Um, a quote from Kono, I was street passing with much fewer people than I expected. So I thought we had to, we had better do something. And uh, so they did. So um, thank goodness for, Meetings in Nintendo's offices in Manhattan, I guess, is the moral of the story. That's not even a moral. I don't know. Um, but it's an interesting little tidbit on how Nintendo comes up with ideas. A lot of this stuff is just like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if... And then they get to work, write something, and next thing you know, it's uh, it's a, a bullet point on the back of a box somewhere. 
Yeah, it, it's interesting that it took them this long when there have been lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people complaining on the internet they have never had a street pass tag. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, it's that's all you hear. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, street pass is useless. I get three a year. How am I going to yep. complete I live in the Midwest puzzles? and I've never had a street pass tag. I'm a farmer. I'm three miles away from my nearest neighbor. How is this? How does this work for me? Um, yeah, all that type of stuff. Um, but it's good that he experienced it firsthand and uh, decided to do something to fix it. So thanks, Kono. All right. Um, another interesting Nintendo interview. Um, <laughs> there was an interview with uh, the, uh, the Zelda producer. Um, how do you say his name? E.G. A- Onuma. A.G. Onuma. Aonuma. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, he was asked the question um, whether Nintendo has planned uh, or is planning to remake The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. And apparently he laughed out loud. And he didn't want to be misquoted with his laughter. So ple- he, he basically told the, the interviewer, please write that I laughed. Don't make it sound like I laughed because I was troubled or inconvenienced or put out. I don't want them to read anything into it. But if you want to say that I laughed, I think that would be a good answer. And then <laughs> if they want to inter- in- interpret my laughter as, yeah, we're making it or no, we're not. I guess that's up to them. <laughs> that is the weirdest quote I've ever heard. Um and of course, that's come from Nintendo. So yeah, Nintendo's laughing, but they don't want their laughter interpreted um, in, in bad ways. Um, so they instruct the interviewer how to best interpret their laughter, um, but then say, well, we must just leave it up to the listeners or the readers anyway. You know, Steven, it's things like this that really reinforce why I love Nintendo. It just seems like a <laughs> bunch of fun loving people. Half the time they seem like a bunch of fun loving people. The other half they sound like a bunch of dummies they, they sound like they um are very very quick to ignore um various big um big pieces of technology and culture and just do their yeah. own thing yeah it's uh pretty 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 darn crazy all right uh next up uh memers me memers wow memers that's the new me verse i am so tired and i can't that even comes talk with a purse for men <laughs> that's what they're calling the bag for the 2ds it's the memers yes we should we should we should trademark that somebody get memers.com right now hey hey, take a memo trademark memers we're gonna make a million all right kara get in here (laughs) i need you to go upstairs right now and register memers.com yes do do it it. how do do i spell that just do it (laughs) figure it out um yes i'm the idea man (laughs) <laughs> there has been an update to we use me verse of verse the with a the sound um yes. and and the big change to it uh previous on me verse when you're um hanging around you'd have to go to a community and if you wanted to post you'd be posting directly from a game or you'd be posting to a community and uh they've changed it uh this week where you can actually go right to your activity feed and just post a generic um, message that all of your friends and followers will see. So is this the first step to Miiverse being kind of like its own social network? Uh, I guess this is what they wanted to do before opening it um, to like smartphone apps and stuff like that, um, yeah. which they said are still coming at some point, I guess. Um, but yeah, you can post a whole whack load of characters. You can post about nothing. Um, it's the it's the Seinfeld of social networks. It's great. <laughs> it is great. It is great. I thought that's what Twitter was. And that is kind of what Twitter is too. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to have to cross post to three networks now. Oh my God, my life is getting so difficult. <laughs> so difficult. <laughs> All right. Uh, last but not least, um, there was an article in the latest Famitsu in Japan um, that a new Final Fantasy um, game is coming out. A new Theater Rhythm Final Fantasy game is coming out. It's called Theater Rhythm Final Fantasy Curtain Call. It's going to be coming out in the spring in Japan. Um, it will probably come out in the U.S. because there was a domain and a trademark registered in the U.S., but they could just be protecting their IP, I guess. Um, and this is going to be a sequel to the really, really awesome Theater Rhythm Final Fantasy that came out um, a year and a half ago. Like came out a while ago. Um, I played it, loved it. Didn't know what to expect of it um, when I first um, played the demo. Played the demo, loved it, uh, bought the game, and played like 50, 60 hours of the game. Um, Curtain Call itself will be um, featuring a playlist of over 200 songs, including tracks from their newest stuff like Final Fantasy XIV and uh, Lightning Returns Final Fantasy XIII. 
Um, there's going to be 60 characters that are unlockable in the game and a new versus battle mode. Um, so you can have multiplayer battles, I guess, with your friends. Um, yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, it's going to be coming out, uh, as I said, in Japan um, in the spring. Um, it says here in the article on Joystick that the last uh, iteration took about five months to make it over here. But um, maybe this one will be out a little bit earlier or not. Who knows? But anyway, I'm um, really looking forward to this one. Uh, we'll be following this title here on the show. Um, and we'll let you know when a U.S. release date has been announced. Now, I thought that this was just going to be the theater of Final Fantasy with all the DLC bundled. Um, it, it, there, uh, it could be. There could be a lot of, uh, a lot of the DLC. Um, but I know that there's um, tracks from games that were not in the original game. So maybe this is going to be a best of, um, a, a final mix version or whatever that's going to have uh, all that stuff. Sure. Um, that is definitely possible. Um, I know that um, when this game came out in Japan, um, they were bringing out new tracks like every week for almost a year um, that people were paying like a dollar for. Uh, and it did really yeah. well for uh, for Square Enix. So I don't know. I don't know what this one is. Um, basically, the only news that we have is uh, from the small little um, quarter page article in the latest Famitsu. So I'm sure there's yeah. going to be more stuff um, released on this and we'll definitely cover it here on the show. Yeah, when I bought Theater Rhythm for 3DS, the first one, the only one that's out here so far, um, I looked online on there and there were about 50 songs available to download. Yep. Uh, and each one of them was 99 cents. Yeah. I was yeah. like, wow, so you're saying that the $25 <laughs> I spent on this for the discount plus $50 for $75 I could have all these songs. It is a $100 game if you didn't get it um, yeah. on, on a sale. If you bought it retail price, it's a $100 yep. game essentially. To get all the songs, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's so, nuts. We'll see what this is. Nuts, nuts, nuts. Um, mm-hmm. the, the, where I first really played it was on iOS. Um, I downloaded the mm-hmm. iPad app, which was free, and then had uh, a bunch of DLC. And I was just like, this is stupid. I'm going to go buy the, the 3DS game for $30 and, and, and play this instead um, instead of buying all these tracks. Um, and then really loved it. Uh, I was being all kind of grumpy about it um, just because I didn't want to buy it. Uh, like individual tracks on my iPad. Um, but then at the end of the day, I ended up buying some of the, some of the tracks that I really wanted through DLC um, just because I wanted to play them, spending a buck a piece or whatever. So um, it definitely is working for him. Uh, if any franchise out there could do this, <clears throat> it would be Final Fantasy. I mean, there's such, um, such loved uh, songs, like uh, all of the like Final Fantasy, uh, Final Fantasy 7 songs that are covered and covered and covered and covered on YouTube videos um, whether you like it or not um, like uh, what's the name of the the big track um, I guess there's the, the from, one, one wing angel would be one of them but there was another one yeah. from Final Fantasy 7 that gets quoted uh, or not quoted uh, covered all, all the time I can't I can't even think about it I'm way too tired but um, they're people love that music um, and basically bringing out a game where people can buy it uh, for 99 cents at a time was pretty darn smart of uh, Square Enix. So um, I guess it's just be more of that, which isn't a bad thing. It was a really good game. All right. Um, yeah, I think that's going to about do it, man. Um, we actually got a lot of news in this episode, which is surprising because we did two shows this week. I thought there'd be nothing. I thought this would be a 20 minute show turns out well i think we had some stuff that we just didn't cover on tuesday even though it was already out that's true i saved a couple things for here but um yeah we got got some really good stuff so steven thanks again for joining me and spending two of your evenings uh chatting with me on the phone or over skype i guess that's fine i like doing this i appreciate it thanks for having me really do yeah and thanks everybody for tuning in and subscribing i'll put on some music Um, We love hearing from you guys and we love the fact that you subscribe to the show. Um, Head on over to vgpodcast.com. Let us know what you think of the show by clicking contact us at the top of the page. You can email us directly vgpodcasts at gmail.com or you can call our voicemail line, which is area code 505 vgpodcasts. Um, We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. On Twitter, you can follow me at Dazme or at Steven at Steven J. Munn. Um, We'll put put, put links in the show notes because there's lots of letters huge number of letters and you might get it wrong so i'll put a link in the show notes <laughs> but uh yeah that's gonna about do it for this episode uh, again guys thanks for uh, subscribing and we'll talk to you in about a week's time take it easy good night all <laughs>